What if I told you there was a way you could live for free and in some cases even get paid to live in a property that you own? Sounds too good to be true? Well, it's not. So in this video, I'll break down how house hacking works, the benefits and drawbacks of this strategy, and how you can get started using this strategy. Stick around until the end of the video where I'll share how you can house hack without actually owning any real estate. Hey, what's up? Darren Voros here. My mission is to help you reduce your real estate education time from months to minutes. Subscribe not to miss what's coming. House hacking has become very popular with the rise of real estate pricing over the last few years. It's also gained traction because the need for smaller housing stock and the desire for less stuff and less space. Affordability has also become a major issue as we're seeing our affordability index in places like Toronto and Vancouver push to between 66 and 81% respectively, which means that in Toronto, 66% of the money that people earn is going towards paying for their living expenses. And that doesn't leave a lot left over for things like food, transportation, clothing, entertainment, and in my case, dog treats for Ella. Even outside of these major centers, affordability can range anywhere between 35 and 45%. And if 40% of your income is going towards your housing costs, you can see why house hacking has become so popular. So what is house hacking? House hacking is a strategy that involves renting out portions of your residence to generate income. Now, some of you might be willing to take this strategy to extreme levels in order to be able to save as much money as possible. For instance, you could rent out rooms in your house. You could do short-term Airbnb rentals, or you could convert your garage to living space. But for simplicity, let's look at the most common scenario, which is purchasing a multi-unit property or purchasing a property and converting it to multiple units. The first time I house hacked, I bought a triplex, moved into one unit and rented out the other two apartments. Generally speaking, the more units that you have in the property, the better chance you have of actually getting paid to live in your space. But house hacking can work on any type of property. Let's look at some of the pros and cons. Benefit number one, lower down payments. Because this is going to be your primary residence and owner occupied, lenders often give the most preferential rates and terms on those kinds of mortgages. Why is that? Well, because the banks know that if you have multiple properties and things start to go wrong, the first payment that you're going to make every single month is going to be on your primary residence and the property that you live in. Because of that, lenders are usually willing to go to a higher loan to value ratio and allow for a lower down payment. In some cases, as little as 5% down payment can be used. Benefit number two, you can afford more. You can generally buy a higher priced asset especially if all of the units are legal. And this is why I'm such a big fan of creating legal suites in your properties. If you buy a property with multiple suites, the bank will use the income from the other suites you are renting to help you qualify for the mortgage. So if you had two additional suites and you are renting them out for $1,500 a month, that would be $3,000 per month in added revenue. The bank would add $36,000 a year to your qualifying income. And this might open up a different price point for you to go shopping and buy a property. Benefit number three, tax write-offs. Because a section of your home is considered a rental property, you can write off a portion of your mortgage interest and your expenses. So this further helps you reduce the amount of money that you need to earn or increases the amount of money that you get to save because you'll be paying less in taxes every year. Benefit number four, you can repeat the process. You can buy a property with a low down payment because it's going to be your primary residence. You can then rent out the suites in the property for say a year. After a year, you can go and buy another property and move into that property. Now that property is going to be your principal residence, allowing you to put a lower down payment on it. But what about the first house you bought? You rent out all of the suites in that property, including the one you were living in, and now you have two properties. You can see how this becomes a beneficial way to grow your portfolio using very little money down each time. Now, be careful here. It's really important that the house you plan to keep as a rental house has positive cash flow so that you're not dipping into your pocket each month to support the first property. If you're not sure how to calculate positive cash flow, check out this video right here to make sure you're including all the right expenses. Now, before you get too excited about this strategy, it's not all signs sunshine and roses, there are some downsides to house hacking. Downside number one, you have to deal with tenants. You are now officially a landlord and there are additional challenges that come with that. You don't have to manage your own properties. You can hire a property manager to do that, but you will still have to make decisions and deal with tenants every once in a while. Downside number two, you're living in a shared building. I live in Toronto. Well, I'm in Costa Rica right now, but most properties in Toronto are multifamily, so I'm used to it. But if you are someone who likes to have your own space, such as a single family dwelling, you'll 
you'll have to get used to the idea of sharing a building with other people. Sometimes this is hugely beneficial because your tenants will be better behaved and keep the property in better condition, but be prepared for some sound transfer. The other thing that is sometimes hard to deal with in a shared space is dividing up the outdoor space. Do me a favor with these two things. Try and find properties that have the ability for multiple outdoor entertaining areas, and if you're renovating, add extra sound insulation to keep noise transfer to a minimum. Trust me, you'll thank me later. But all in all, I think the benefits far outweigh the downsides, and that's why I'm such a big fan of this strategy. As promised, I wanted to share a way that you can house hack without actually owning any real estate. You could rent out a larger home with four or five bedrooms and put yourself on the lease. Then you could rent out rooms to other people. What you're paying in rent to the landlord does not have to equal what you could charge people to rent rooms. Just be honest and open about this with the person you are renting from. The last thing you want is for them to believe that you're going to be staying there alone and the next thing you know, you have five roommates. To learn more about house hacking and many other strategies I teach in much more detail, check out my masterclass at darrenvoros.com. If you have questions about house hacking or any other real estate related questions, feel free to leave them in the comments section below. You can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram where I post regularly. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on Tuesday.